On the line with us, Brendan Fisher, the De Deputy Executive Director at Documented and an attorney. Documented.net is the website. Uh, the Twitter handle is It's Documented or Brendan underscore Fisher. Uh, Brendan, it's been a while since we've talked. It's great to have you back on the program. Tell me about uh, Eagle AI and Cleta Mitchell. Maybe we should start with who is Cleta Mitchell. Yeah, uh, well, it's great to be back. Nice to see you again, Tom. Um, so Clayton Mitchell is a longtime Republican political law attorney, and she most famously supported Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, including joining the, the infamous phone call with the Georgia Secretary of State, where Trump asked him to find uh, nearly 12,000 votes to swing the election from Trump to Biden. Um, so Clayton Mitchell is... Uh, uh, a supporter of Donald Trump's failed 2020 coup, but she is still very much involved in elections and in setting the, the rules and processes for elections. Um, so since after her role in the 2020 attempted coup, she was booted from her role as a partner at a law firm and joined the Conservative Partnership Institute, which is the $45 million MAGA institution led by former Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. And she launched what's called the Election Integrity Network, which is a, a network of state-based activists and groups working to help to turn the big lie into action. Right. Now, I understand that what she's trying to do is is a, a massive voter challenge program based on the premise that there are people who have moved uh, whose names are still on voter rolls. And that's somehow a threat. I, I mean, I I, I, I I grew up in Michigan. I moved to to, to New Hampshire. Uh, we moved to Georgia. We moved to Vermont. We moved to Germany. We moved to Oregon. We moved back to back to uh, Vermont, and then we moved back to, or, or actually moved to DC, and then we moved back to Oregon. I never, ever told any state that I was leaving that I was leaving, but you know, they figure it out. If you don't pay your taxes for a year or two uh, in the state, they take you off the voting rolls. I mean, this, this is a problem that doesn't exist. It's a, you know, it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. What's going on with this? Right, right. Well, to step back a little bit, you're right that when a person moves from one state to the other, they may not have their registration from the prior state removed or updated. Or if a person uh, is registered in one state and dies in another state, that information may not get transmitted back to the original state. And there was a solution to this, or there is a solution to this uh, that for a long time had broad bipartisan support, and it was called ERIC, the Electronic Registration Information Center. And it was a bipartisan consor consortium of states uh, to share information across state lines securely and confidentially to help states make sure that their voter rolls were kept up to date, which is a, and that in and of itself is, is entirely valid and it's important, it's an important consideration. Um, Eric also encouraged member or required member states to remind eligible but unregistered voters how they could register, how they could participate in our democracy if they so chose. And for that latter reason, Eric became a target of right-wing conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists and Clayton Mitchell. And over the past year or so, you've seen nine Republican states cut ties with Eric, cut ties with yeah. what was very likely the, the the best option, the best the best well, way. My, my theory on that was state. that they're they're cutting ties with Eric because they want to rig their voting rolls. They want to start throwing mostly black people in mostly cities off voting rolls, like you know Ohio has been doing forever. Yeah, well, enter enter Eagle AI. Um, so Kaleda Mitchell and her election integrity network played a key role in pressuring these Republican-led states to cut ties with Eric, but they didn't have a replacement. The states that left Eric did not have another way of keeping voter rolls up to date. And what they've created, what Clayton Mitchell and her allies are backing, is this program called Eagle AI. And what Eagle AI is primarily doing at this point is taking voter roll maintenance out of the hands of election officials and putting it in the hands of MAGA activists and election conspiracy theorists. Oh, God. <laughs> How so? How does this work? So Eagle AI is a, 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 a platform. It's, it's a software developed by a retired Georgia physician with no apparent background in election administration. 
and it draws in data sources from da data from public sources like voter rolls, uh, the national change of address database, newspaper obituaries, and throws all that data that data into this this platform and identifies uh, potentially problematic voter registrations. Right. And activists can then call through this database, uh, identify someone who they think is improperly on the rolls, and the platform then automatically generates the voter challenge form, which is submitted to the the the, the local uh, election lo local election officials shortly before the the next meeting. Um, so it's ultimately what Eagle Eye is creating is an opportunity for MAGA activists to generate potentially thousands of voter challenges at the click of a button. Wow. Um, and the consequences of this are, are there's many potential consequences of this. One is it could lead to eligible voters being purged from the rolls. Right. Which um, I'm sure is their goal. To, right. I think that is the goal. The, um, but I, the, it, it, at a minimum, it's going to create new hurdles uh, for eligible voters who've had their registrations challenged. They may have to vote a provisional ballot. They may get a notice in the Which mail saying get counted. for a hearing to show that they are actually eligible to vote. Right. Um, and some people may not end up voting at all when they face those kinds of hurdles. But it's also going to overwhelm the local election offices that are already under-resourced, coming in um, un under attack from election conspiracy theorists. Right. And they are going to have to find a way to deal with all of these incoming challenges, which in many states, by law, they do actually have to find a way to process. Now, uh, one of the one of the concerns, one of the big concerns, Greg Pallas actually was the guy who, who really uh, sensitized me to this uh, back when I was writing my book, The Hidden History of the War on Voting, um, uh, and it was kind of a shocking discovery, was that a lot of the voter purges, particularly uh, from uh, uh, interstate cross-check, uh, were just first and last name purges. And that white people coming from at least a dozen different language groups in Europe have an incredible diversity of last names. You got, you know, uh, Brzezinski's and, and it not, you know, it's not all Smith and Jones, right? You've got all these, all these odd names of Latvian and Lithuanian and Czech and Russian and, uh, you know, there's, there's incredible diversity in the names of white people. Black people, not so much. Most of them adopted names that were, you know, the, the names of a, a small, relatively small number of slave-owning families in the South or were named after American presidents. Uh, you know, the, the Jackson, uh, Washington, uh, you know, the, the people with those names are pr predominantly black. Uh, similarly, Hispanics draw on a very small number of names. Uh, you know, the, there's there's probably a million Jose Garcias in America, and the same thing with Asian people. There's there's a handful of names that are that are overwhelmingly represented um, in the Asian, Hispanic, and Black communities. And so, if all you're looking at is first and last name, which is what these people are first, uh, even middle name, which is what these people are going to be scraping off public records, then you know a a uh, uh, a, a, a James um, uh, James Madison, a, a, a Joe Washington, a uh, Jose Garcia. If they find one of them in Georgia, th then they'll knock all the people with that same name off in in ten other states. Uh, where so so any kind of purge based on you know just comparing names is always going to cut really really hard into the black Hispanic and Asian communities and very little into the into the white community. Is that is that a reasonable concern, Brendan Fisher? That that's exactly right. And that speaks to the the weaknesses of this program because they are relying on a very limited number of data points. Or maybe it's the are, strength of this program from their point of view, because they don't want blacks and Hispanics and Asians to vote. Yes, ultimately this is about making it harder to vote. Um, this is about making it harder harder for people to fully participate in our democracy and have their voices heard. Um, but they are they are relying. This Eagle AI program is relying on a very limited number of data points, and that's going to result in false positives because yeah. America is a is a big country. There are a lot of people. There are a number of people who are going to share the same name. They may even share the same date of birth, but they are different people. And when you're relying on the the very limited number of data points that Eagle AI is. It's going to result in false positives. It's going to result in eligible voters, uh, particularly eligible voters from uh, marginalized backgrounds, having their eligibility challenged. Right. Um, so, so isn't the bottom line here, if you live 
in a blue area in a red state, look out because your voter registration is at risk. Right, right. Eagle AI is empowering MAGA activists to become vigilantes and to challenge eligible voters and to make it harder for people to have their voices heard in our democracy. Absolutely incredible. You can read all about it at documented.net. Brendan Fisher is the deputy executive director. And uh, Brendan, thanks so much for dropping by and filling us in on this. 